Hey y'all, it's me, Bus Leah, and welcome back to Hot or Rat. Wow, that was extra whispery. <laughs> Today we'll be reviewing the finale of RuPaul's Drag Race UK vs. The World Series 2. All 11 of our internationally acclaimed superstars return for a reunion and to walk the runway one last time. Category was Finale Eleganza Extravaganza. And our top four competed in a lip sync smackdown for The Crown. So we'll be breaking all of that down, plus covering the controversy of Marina's loss in the first lip sync, and allegedly plans double crowning, and discussing reunion drama along the way. And and first up, she's the queen of the party. It's Mayhem Miller, who steps onto the runway in a really bold and beautiful pattern on this fabric she used to create this look. I absolutely love the skin tone illusion mesh cutouts on the front part of this gown, giving some extra visual excitement in the front. And the general silhouette of what she's accomplished here is seriously amazing from the headpiece to the shoulders. That perfectly cut ruffled skirt at the bottom. This is such a gorgeous look for her and maybe one of the best things she's ever worn on the runway like ever. This look was absolutely hot. And I think such a great way to leave things after her stumble on the very first episode where she forgot her words to her guided meditation and was ultimately sent home. And next up, the name we'll never forget how to pronounce. Arancha Castilla Mancha, who we find out during the reunion has actually been voted Miss Congeniality by the jury of her peers, which actually makes her the first official Miss Congeniality of the Drag Race UK franchise versus the world and regular. And although there's no monetary prize associated with the awarding of this title, it seems 50 pounds is of no concern to her. She's happy just to know she's made so many great friends and sisters on this franchise. So props to you, mama, and congrats to the first Drag Race UK Miss Congeniality. And over on the runway, she actually wears her new Miss Congeniality sash, serving a look that she says is giving high school graduation eleganza, which kind of took me by surprise because at my high school graduation, I think they just had us wear like oversized black gowns, but I guess they do things a little differently over in Espana. I actually really love this look. It's so quirky and different. Like the way she's pulling from the 17th and 18th centuries with this Baroque Marie Antoinette-esque style, which we can see in the makeup, the caged mini hoop skirt and those poofy sleeves, but it's used modern fabrics to construct this all in a kind of jumpsuit type look. I can't really say I've ever seen anything like this. I think the plaid is really smart and I love the colors used there and how she also in those flare pants has not only the giant like bustle of ruffles coming in the back, but also has used men's silk ties to create the front. This look is so hot and definitely made me wish we got to see more of her on this season because the ball episode I feel kind of did her dirty. But you know what they say, losing is the new winning and there's always all-stars, international all-stars, any other country versus the world, and all-stars Espana. And except Jombers Blonde, who gave Scarlet Envy the self-proclaimed drama of the season or run for her money during this reunion. Drama which was all kicked off when Michelle Visage prompted Tia, Scarlet, and Jombers to revisit the outcome of the lip sync where Jombers was ultimately sent home. And here Tia reveals to Jombers that she ultimately would have sent Jombers home as well had she won that lip sync. Jombers and Tia then have a bit of a back and forth where Jombers says that she always knew she preferred Pixie. They're referring to Pixie Polite from Drag Race UK Series 4. And then takes a shot at Tia Coffee's wig and shoe combo with the dress she's wearing. And although we as audience members don't know all the drama of this triangle of drama, we did hear Tia suggest in a confessional when Jombers was eliminated that there may have been an issue between Pixie and Jombers, which may have contributed to her reasoning behind pulling Jombers lipstick. But regardless of who does or does not like who in this little drama triangle, one thing was made very clear by Miss Jombers Blonde. She was not happy with how things shook out, oh, at all. And for her finale eleganza extravaganza runway, she says she's giving us a bit of fashion clown, where she's quite literally giving us some classic royal jester inspired type of clownery drag. She's got a red, white, and black color palette going on, which I do enjoy. And it's probably really niche and nerdy, but this look is very much reminding me of the juggler job that you could equip Moogles with in Final Fantasy Tactics, but you know, yassified. And ultimately I'm a little torn on this look because I do enjoy the styling and effect of what she's created, but the look overall feels very visually distracting. Like each different element is fighting for the center of attention instead of playing harmoniously with each other. I think the use of a clown nose as a prop on a stick and the clown nose's decorating the top 
top half part of her look were really cute details. And the wig is phenomenal. But there's like too much poofing and gathering and bustling on different parts of this look. And then she's got these really distracting polka dot tights on that are taking away from, I think, the craftsmanship and fashion of the rest of the look. I think cleaner lines, more structure, and less random bunching and bustling and poofing would have made this look more successful. And as is, I'm going to give it a... And next up, it's your K, she's your K, it's Keita Minaj. Who I thoroughly enjoyed on this season, and it made me really sad to see her be so down on herself during the reunion, even saying that she thought she sucked. And while sure, I think she had trouble in some of the comedy challenges, translating that kooky sense of humor into ultimately very US and UK centric lenses, she definitely did not miss in the looks department. I love how well she was able to sell her sense of fashion and witchy, masculine, but feminine sense of style on the runway every single time she was challenged to do so. And look, she's got on tonight is no exception to that. She's giving us ooky kooky spooky warrior unicorn witch queen an all white with just a hint of pink and blue color in a streak in the top of her wig and then coming down in the bobbles of that beautiful ponytail. And as she always does, I love how she plays with these sharp structured elements like the crystallized rib cage and unicorn horn piece on her head, contrasting with the delicate applique and ruffles of the train in this dress. It's so gorgeous, magical, and definitely <laughs> next up Rawr. It's Gothy Kendall, who was a little quiet, maybe unsurprisingly so in the reunion, but definitely slayed on the runway. And she, like Kata, is also an all-white and very much playing with the concepts of masculinity and femininity in this outfit with this boned corset, which has a beautiful shape and silhouette on her body and then is suspending these wide leg flared ruffle tool pieces that are knotted like at the knees to give some weight to it and movement when she spins around. I just think this is such a chic and sophisticated look from gothy. It's so beautiful, delicate, and also hard. This look is definitely hot. Hey, next up, welcome back to El Infierno. It's Choritza May, who on the runway is giving us an easily clockable Lydia Dietz from Beetlejuice red wedding gown reference. A bigger and draggier with more ruffles and a bigger shape and silhouette. And seeing a Lydia reference on the runway is something I'll always enjoy, but I do like also how this vibrant red color connects back to this theme of El Infierno and flames, which she's been incorporating into her looks throughout the season. A Personal style gripe I had with this look though was the choice of hair. The original Lydia look is so striking because of that classic black and red combo. And her choice to do this light to dark gray ombre wig is kind of strange to me. It washes her out a little bit. And also I think has some conflicting style references because she's got these spiky bangs like Lydia does, but then also did some like Y2K kind of brat style braid knots at the top. But that's a relatively small complaint and I would still give this look a Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. And next up, Scarlet Envy, whose drama this episode is her revisiting her elimination from last week, where Hannah Conda ultimately pulled her lipstick and sent Scarlet home. And it's here where Scarlet finds out Tia also pulled Scarlet's lipstick. And there's a bit of drama back and forth between Tia, Hannah, and Scarlet, where Scarlet's trying to figure out why she was ultimately sent home, but Scarlet doesn't seem truly satisfied with the explanation she hears from either queen. Because Hannah, the first time she pulled her lipstick two weeks ago, was basically saying she pulled Scarlet's lipstick because she liked everyone else in the room more than Scarlet. And then now this week, she's saying she pulled her lipstick because of track record. Ultimately though, my read on this situation is Scarlet just didn't have the closest relationship with either of these queens. And I do think both of them saw Scarlet as a threat to their pathway to a crown. Ultimately though, in a competition like this, where the contestants are eliminating themselves, I guess we could argue it really was on Scarlet to try to forge a better alliance early on in the competition with some of these people, knowing that she she could later be on the chopping block. And she didn't. Over the runway though, she does forge one final serve. This look is absolutely gorgeous. It's a clear homage to the Kim Kardashian wet Mugler dress from the 2019 Camp Met Gala. And although we have seen recreations of this iconic look on the Drag Race runway before, I can't say we've ever really seen it interpreted or reimagined in this way. I love the way she's used clustered pearls to create this chest piece. And it has a super long structured and gathered blush fabric coming down as the rest of the gown with little crystals dangling off. Plus the way she's added so much drag and drama with this wig and the slowness of her walk, I was living. This look is wet. <laughs> and next up, we've got Hannah Kondo, who is giving us some pink, purple, orange tie-dye, but make it drag fashion on the runway. And I'll say usually I'm not the biggest fan of tie-dye, especially considering I think it's a really difficult dye pattern to make look 
chic or glamorous. But she and whoever created this gown did a great job of doing just that. I really love the structuring of the panels and that corset and how it comes down to that beautiful long train. Let's get some great details on this, like that giant pink bow shawl thing around her shoulders. And as usual, hair and mug are absolutely five out of five on her. She looks so hot. And next up, La Grande Dame, who says she's serving us a little bit of titanium goddess. And yes, in fact, she is. During this monochromatic silver pearlescent gown with these like caged structured shiny silver pieces that are ruffled down the back and along the side of the gown, which adds kind of bounce and movement to this otherwise metal and stiff looking gown. This is a gorgeous contrast of materials and I love that silver chrome color on her. Plus I think it's fun thematically to see all these pearlescent beadings on this gown when we think about the pearl beadings and the rainbow colors she wore in her confessional and also on her promo look. She's giving through lines, she's giving story, she's giving I just escaped prison, climbed the fence, and got tangled up in the barbed wire and then hit the RuPaul's Drag Race runway. This look is hot. And next up, Marina Summers, who for this runway says she has risen from the sea and is ready to take over the mother tucking world. And she here is giving us a really gorgeous homage to the ocean with this pearlescent coral reef headpiece and chest moment, which transitions into a black velvet gown with some pretty blue ruffles in the skirt of it to imitate like the waves of the ocean. And I love how this finale look thematically connects to her larger catalog of runways, which have all been very Filipino and ocean or water inspired. However, this is my favorite look from her she has served some fierce ass runways the past couple weeks and this one just feels a tad disconnected across the three different pieces of the ocean the black velvet and the coral and seeing how intricate and beautiful those coral bead pieces are i was like oh my god i kind of just want an entire look made from that that would have been for me the serve but this look is pretty and i'm gonna give it a safe <sighs> And lastly, the question remains, Tia Coffee, who hits the runway in a glowed up version of her adequate green dress made of material that is on her body. And this look is, yes, an obvious improvement to the original green dress she created on Drag Race UK. And I think she looks very pretty in it. The structuring and stiffness of the corset going down into that feathered skirt is very pretty, but there's so much of this green feather skirt that it's kind of giving me yassified car wash, like girl, Scrubber, hardly know her. And while she looks great, I'm not necessarily gagging or understanding the motive for doing another glow up runway because she already did that for the prehistoric look. And doing it again here just kind of was like, okay. And instead of referencing a past failed runway look, she could have used this finale runway to look forward into the future and show us what's next for Tia Coffee. But I would give this look a safe hot. Now on to the lip sync smackdown for the crown. The drag the drama, the controversy of it all. So first up, we have Marina Summers versus Hannah Conda lip syncing to I'm Out of Love by Anastasia. And this lip sync duo was partly decided by the fickle finger of fate, Arancha Castilla La Mancha, who spun a wheel that actually had Marina's face on it more than anyone else's because they added the queen's face to the wheel the number of times they won a repeater badge. And being selected by the fickle finger of fate is actually seemingly a blessing at first because Marina then gets to choose her opponent in this lip sync from the three remaining queens who I'll remind you every single one of which she has beaten in a lip sync earlier this season. And not one of those lip syncs I'll also remind you were even close to the other queen winning. Like Marina dominated every single one of those lip syncs for the win. And so I'm sitting there thinking, it doesn't matter who she chooses, like, she's gonna win this. She is a performer at heart. She has more magnetism, charisma, and raw performance capability than all three of the other queens put together. And I'm not trying to be shady to the other three, I'm just trying to say Marina is really that good, in my humble opinion. But the gag of the season, nay, the gag of the century, is the outcome of this lip sync. And I did react to this lip sync as well as the other two on my Patreon at patreon.com slash bussyqueen. That's my members only website where my patron family gets exclusive member benefits like early access to my YouTube videos and access to exclusive videos like those reactions. And you can join my Patreon by clicking the link in the description of this video. See you there. But concerning what happens, Hannah approaches this lip sync from an interesting place, almost like a karaoke or something. She's got on these big sunglasses and a microphone prop, which to me felt confusing because I do not understand or like the choice of wearing sunglasses on a TV show where you are ultimately trying to connect both with a panel of judges who want to see your eyes and an audience at home via the camera 
who want to see your eyes. Like I totally lost Hannah in the first half of this lip sync, I could only look at Marina, when the editors actually decided to show us what she was doing. I'll say once Hannah finally takes off the sunglasses, like overall, I think she did okay, but I wasn't captivated or moved in the way I was anytime the camera was looking at Marina. Marina completely destroyed this lip sync and left Hannah choking on dust. And like, there is just no way that anyone could convince me otherwise and maybe I'm delusional, but I saw what I saw. With the gag being that allegedly Marina even slayed harder than what we saw because apparently the editors cut out some of her stunts and tricks during that lip sync like a back bend she did in the climax of the song. Overall here I'd give Hannah a soft two flame rot and Marina five flame hot. This was, in my humble opinion, a robbery caught on HD camera. <laughs> I could not believe what was happening and neither could the queens. Like when the camera panned over to the girls sitting on the stage, they were gagged, they were gooped. Girl, I was gagged and gooped. I'm still gagged and gooped. And I'll just end this section with saying this really hurt to watch. I don't know what the producers and judges were thinking, but I guess that's just when we as fans have to sit back and remember that yes, this is a competition, but it is also ultimately reality TV. And sometimes on reality TV, the producers are producing and we'll just leave it at that. So Hannah gets to move on, and the remaining two queens, La Grand Dame and Tia Coffey, get to lip sync to Boogie Tonight by Booty Love. And thankfully for everyone involved, I think the outcome of this lip sync was a lot more justifiable, and actually one I agree with. This is a very silly and high energy song that Tia really shone in. Tia in this lip sync was the queen of comedy. She was giving props with the confetti cannon and the glass bottles, which she breaks over her head. And she did a great job finding ways to integrate her cheesy dad joke sense of humor into her performance. Like she is constantly miming out a different part of the song in a funny way that's making me and the judges on screen laugh. The Grand Dame though, I will say gave a very solid performance and perhaps one of the best like lip sync dancing performances I think that she gave throughout the entire competition. She was fierce, she slayed, she served and looked damn good doing it by the way. And really, I don't think she had a single mistake or slip up in this entire performance, but this is RuPaul's Drag Race, and ultimately, if there's not like at least a small layer of comedy being added into things, then RuPaul's not happy. And everything Tia was doing felt so great for TV, and I thoroughly enjoyed all of the nonsense and shenanigans and tomfoolery she was doing up there. So here I'd give both queens hots. And in the final lip sync, we have Hannah Conda versus Tia Coffee lip syncing to Your Disco Needs You by Kylie Minogue. And here we have basically two campy comedy queens going head to head, trying to out joke each other. Tia's doing phone selfies. She got more broken bottles and the moment she wins lip sync in my opinion is in the french spoken word part of the song when she goes over to the side of the stage and basically acts like la grande dom is speaking french directly to her overall tia was more animated and dominated and used more of the stage and while hannah did good i do also feel like she kind of acknowledged that she was losing the lip sync about halfway through it was like she had run out of things to do and was kind of just looking at tia coffee do her performance so here i'd give tia hot and hannah a warming up and ultimately I do agree with Tia's win here, ultimately winning her the crown. Which means we now have a new queen of the mother tucking world where Tia Coffee joins Blue Hydrangea and Raja O'Hara in this new category of versus the world winners. And I wanna absolutely say congratulations to Tia Coffee. She was such an interesting character to watch on this season because she did have this glow up in her drag, but more so I think kind of glow up in how she understands herself and how her personality and humor relate to other people. We got to see her actively apply the judges critiques throughout the season and then she ended on such a high note with that roast where it's like wow Tia finally like truly gets that timing that sense of humor and she has harnessed that power she had within her all along and that was fun to watch. There is though apparently an alternate ending to this finale which didn't air and it wasn't the crowning of any other queen specifically but rather apparently a double crowning between Tia Coffee and Hannah Conda. And I'm saying apparently because while I couldn't personally verify this there was a user on the X platform who posted a video of the finale rolling credits where there are captions on screen in which RuPaul announces both Tia and Hannah as winners of the season. Was this double crowning ever actually re or intended though, we may never know. But I guess this was more likely just a clerical oversight. Because as we know, multiple endings are usually filmed. But to my knowledge, the people actually putting the show together in the editing room and such don't know the true ending until much closer to the actual finale to help prevent the dissemination of spoilers. And so this was probably just a clerical error. Like somebody probably just forgot to go in and delete the subtitle
subtitles of the ending that didn't happen, whether it was ever intended to actually air or not. This wasn't the first time that this happened though, because back on UK season three, Elle of a Day was actually announced in the captions of the episode while they were actively crowning Crystal Versace. So is it that a little strange is going on over in the production room, Drag Race UK? But it does seem this caption issue has now been fixed. As for my final thoughts in this episode, I'll say yes, like my spirit was defeated after seeing Marina lose this lip sync. It was totally unexpected and not in a good way. It felt like a predetermined production decision to not have her move past that first lip sync and made me just really wonder why? Like, is the production team just farming girls for future seasons of All Stars and Versus the World? Is that what happened? Or was there something more insane that prevented Marina from progressing to the next lip sync? I guess we'll never know. But lastly, let's talk hottest thoughts in the finale Eleganza Extravaganza Runway. I'm gonna give it to La Grande Dame. I also asked my patrons to vote on their hottest thoughts and they've chosen La Grande Dame. And finally, I say thanks to you for watching today's video and tuning in all season to watch me hot or raw all the looks and challenges. It's been a lot of fun and I wanna remind you one last time, you can help support my channel financially every single month and help make future Bussy Queen videos possible by clicking the link in the description of this video and joining my Patreon today. And I'm gonna give an extra special shout out to Ashley Brungart, Child Free Mateau, Dorothy Hall, Felicia Mara, Matthew Burns, Stephen Topher, and Will and Tana, who are all supporting me at my Bussy Queen collector tier at patreon.com slash Queen. See you later. Love ya. Bye.